Hello there again, friends. Today is 2-11-2022, and today is the Odin Pro Project Vlog Day 59. Uh, get get right to it here. Uh, we finished. I finished the last two exercises of the Part 5 uh, module, the Get the Titles and Find the Oldest exercises. So without further ado, let's jump right to it. So we have here... Um, First, let's go over the um, the readme. You're given an array of objects that represent books with an author and a title that looks like this. Constant books equals. Then you have a title with a with a value, and you have an author with a value, title and author again, and it's just simply basically an array of two, um, two, two books by two authors. Your job is to write a function that takes the array and returns an array of titles. For example, again, this is not code, but for example, uh, uh, it's going to take in the value of books, and it's going to be it's pointing the return statement to say book and book two. Excuse me. It says hints. You should use a built-in JavaScript method to do most of the work for you. So you can kind of figure out where we're going to go with that. So for this one, we're going to use map function. Uh, and the reason being is because uh, I might not do a great job at explaining this, but the map function uh, uh, or map method, if you will, it's not really a function. The, the map array method uh, is a way of uh, querying or putting into uh, an array and getting that same back. So basically, it's kind of a fil the fil kind of like filter, but you're not you're not you're not adding or taking away. The map will will return to you what you put into it. So if you put in two, like we do in this example, it will bring back two. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, I was hoping there would be a tooltip on it today. <laughs> Almost all the time, the tooltips get in the way, and I don't want to. I don't want them to be bothered by it, and uh, it usually gets in the way of you guys seeing everything. But in this example, I want the I want the tooltip to come up, and of course, it doesn't give me anything. <laughs> That's just the way it goes, right? So, to run through this code real quick, um, <clears throat> we have a constant variable called get books, um, and we we have a parameter of books, an input parameter. <laughs> And then um, get books equals books dot map. So we're gonna run that map. That map. Uh, I keep want to say function. It's really a method, uh, array method. <clears throat> and inside of that, we're gonna have a parameter called book that's going to run a function and loop over. Remember, it's a loop. Map is still a loop, and it's gonna loop over book dot title. So basically, what this is going to do is it's going to it's going to apply the value of uh, book dot title of each iteration of each uh, array and each object, and it's going to get the title, and it's going to apply it to get books, and then we're going to return get books, and this is what you get. So this is the other one. So we're going to go out like this. And we're going to go to, I think it's 11. Yep. Okay. NPM test. Uh, let's see. We should be doing find. Maybe. Oh, get. NPM test get the titles dot spec dot js there you go one passed so the guts of it is on the right side here so uh, here's the guts of it so it's just running a test for just as we talked about um, it's gonna run books and it expects to get book and book two because those are the titles and that's what we're keying in on as book dot title uh, so book will be um, your uh, object and then title is the um, uh, did I have that right object and then title is the the key there we go I think I said that right 
uh, leave me a comment if I said that wrong. <clears throat> There's, I'm not super comfortable yet with objects and arrays and the different array methods, and I've I've identified that, but I've got to keep moving on. Um, so. Um, because I've already read over the material twice, so there's no real reason for me to keep <laughs> beating the dead horse. I think I'm just going to have to practice and get better with it, just being honest with you guys. I'm just not, I just don't feel super confident in myself with this stuff. Um, because as you'll see now, um, to find the oldest, I, I worked on this for a while and I, I had no idea. I, I didn't, I couldn't even get any code on the screen. I mean, I had, I had a return statement. I mean, I had, to, I knew I needed to do reduce, and then I got stuck after this point, and I couldn't figure out how to get this to work. So, so um, in full transparency, this is the solution in, in its uh, exact form. Um, so, we're just going to go over this, <clears throat> and we can run it in the terminal. But so, what it's Sorry, I'm skipping around under here. So there's the there's the solution actually. So what it does <coughs> it says given an array of objects representing people with a birth and a death year, return the oldest person. Hence, you should return the whole person object, but the test mostly just checks to make sure the name is correct. This can be done with a couple of chained arrays methods or by using reduce. So I focused on reduce because I didn't want to write a bunch of extra lines of code. Uh, one of the tests checks for people with no death rate. Use JavaScript's date function to get their age as of today. And so we'll just go over, we'll go over that here. Um, this satisfies all that. So I think what, what this uh, down, skipping down here to um, this if function. The if de if not death death equals new date dot get full year that satisfies this bottom part of the check of uh, no death date and we're we'll use the date function to get their age as of today so that dot new dot date or new date uh, is gonna um, add that data that date constructor on there for today's date and then and then get full year is uh, looks like that's gets the year okay so it's that's another internal function to JavaScript um, not customized not coded out it gets the year using local time <clears throat> and that then that it gets appended to the variable death and returns uh, the value of death minus birth and so that makes sense so wrapping it back up to here we have a return statement with array dot reduce and we've talked about reduce several different videos um, it takes on the parameters of oldest and current person and then that um, in turn runs uh, a constant variable called oldest age and it and it runs the get age which is the um, constant for the function birth death rate I actually had to read through this a little bit because actually it's pretty it looks simple, but there's actually a lot going on here. So what it does is it calls get age, which is this constant here, and then in that constant it calls the callback function for uh, birth and death. So what it does here is it it, it inserts parameters from the um, constant or from the sorry from the array. So you have oldest dot year of birth. So what it's going to do is it's going to <clears throat> get that uh, oldest dot year of birth and o and oldest dot year of death and um, get that by running through the function here so birth and death um, actually no that's not right oldest dot year of birth okay okay so current person is an oldest okay so year of death um, I had this figured out and then I walked away and now I was coming here to do this video and now I'm <laughs> got myself all confused year of birth where are they getting that from I mean yeah it's coming from the table or oldest 
oldest year of birth, oldest year of death. Okay, so I am not exactly sure. I thought I knew what, I, what it was. Uh, get age, current person, current person dot year of birth. Current person. Okay, I think, so the oldest is the calculation of the year of birth, yeah, minus death, which is gets the age. So then that puts it into year of, is oldest <clears throat> or current person. They're both going to be ran. Um, and then the array returns the truth or false of this. So what this line of return does is it says if if the oldest age is less than the current age, return current person. And that's what it's going to um, run in the test. It's going to return that to the <clears throat> to the jest. Else, if oldest age is is greater than current age, then we're going to return the oldest, um, which is the calculated value of get age and uh, year of birth and year of death. So, yeah, so what it does is it, it goes out and so it runs this get age under birth of, or death, but it's got to get the year first. So it gets the year of the birth, the year of the death. And then it runs it through this get age to get the return statement of that age. And then the age becomes that value is uh, of see how this is kind of layered. And then that value becomes oldest age and then current age. And then those two are evaluated against each other. And it's returned back into the array for the answer. Um, yeah. Um, I hope I did okay job explaining that. Again, like I said, I am not, I'm not, I'm not super comfortable with my knowledge right now with with the um, these um, special array methods. Um, let's see, npm test. Up, oh, I'm in the wrong one. But with anything, as you guys know, we'll get better over time. So you just got to keep working with it and keep don't give up and keep working at it and keep trying and okay so npm test find the oldest spec yep so of course it's going to run fine it's their code so um so yeah Pause the video if you need to have further understanding of this um, because I may or may not have done a very good job explaining that. And that's kind of why I put the side by side here too so we could kind of take a peek at it together um, and see the uh, array of what we're looking at because, you know, looking at this is to me is pretty hard to understand if you don't have the array in front of you to look at, which is fine because it's in the jest for the test, but in normal world situation, your your uh, array would be in your code, so you just compare it, you know, compare it from your you know to that part of your code. Um, so yeah, um, that's that's about it. Short and sweet for tonight. Um, that takes us up to the end of the knowledge check and the end of this lesson. Uh, I'm now 91% complete in foundations and next thing I'm going to be working on starting this weekend, um, tomorrow, Saturday is project calculator and I started reading through it and, uh, I won't go into it now cause I'll do that in the next video, but basically it's a full blown calculator. Unlike our last exercise, this one is taking aspects of the entire foundations project so this is going to be a meaty meaty project uh, i'm definitely going to have lots of parts to this uh, series on this one 
Um, you're going to be using JavaScript, HTML, CSS. It even says right here, our, our final project is going to combine everything you've learned so far. You're going to make an on-screen calculator using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So we are in for a treat. <laughs> so, you know, no pain, no gain. I'm, we're all going to be stretched, I think, on this one, and I know I will be for sure. So um, with that said, um, I won't make this video any longer. I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed tonight and learned a little bit along the way. I know I didn't cover a whole lot, um, uh, but uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you think of uh, today's uh, uh, two exercises and how you did on them. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And until next time, see ya.